My name is Tim Thomas. I'm the Archery Education Coordinator for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. And we're here to give you some tips on uh, either buying your first uh, compound bow or possibly if you're uh, upgrading the current one you have. The first thing really for Nevada style hunting is the uh, type of terrain that we hunt in, which is a lot of hilly, rugged terrain, brushy, thick cover. So you want to look at a lot of size on the overall length of the, of the equipment and the overall weight of the equipment. Most of your bows are advertised as a bear weight without any accessories on them and they range anywhere from carbon fiber bows which are down at, at three pounds or under all the way up to you know four and a half five pounds depending on how long the bow you get. The thing that, that's kind of confusing to a lot of people is when they say overall length they're talking from axle to axle which is where the axles that go through the camps. So the bow is actually four or five inches longer than that overall than, than what you see in most of the magazines and things. So, Take that into consideration, the type of hunting that you're going to do, if you were doing just sitting in a tree or in a ground blind, you know, the size and the way of the bow isn't as important as it is to when you're hiking and, and hunting the mountains, especially, you know, up chasing sheep or goats or elk or something like that way, it's a, it's a big factor. Next thing is, is, is the draw length, and that's the amount of length from the grip to your anchor point on you, which is very, very important and they're very uh, personal. You need to fit those to you. Uh, and they can be adjusted in most cases by a, a module on the cams or rotato module on the cams. So <clears throat> when you're choosing that equipment, you want to make sure you choose a bow that your draw length is in the middle of that adjustment range. So that as things change or you change releases or you change uh, your draw length a little bit, you're able to adjust into that fit so that the bow fits you absolutely properly that way as far as that draw length goes. Draw weight is the next most important thing. Uh, most people try to shoot more weight than they're really comfortable shooting um, because it seems to be the thing that people want to do. They want to get as much arrow speed out of it. So um, you know, minimum for the state of Nevada is 40 pounds uh, to hunt with, so you have to stay at least above that. Uh, most bows are in 10 pound weight increments for their for their ranges, so they're a 70 pound peak weight bow usually adjusts down to say 60 or 65 pounds. So, you know, you want to draw your weight that's comfortable for you to shoot. You want to be able to slow draw that bow back to the anchor point, no really strict, fast, choppy movements. Uh, the animals will catch that movement and you will uh, scare your prey away. So you want to make sure that you're able to draw that very, very smoothly. And, you know, one thing we recommend in our bow hunter ed classes is if you can sit on the ground with your legs out in front of you, hold the bow out, draw it back to your anchor, still draw, then you're probably drawing the correct amount of weight. There's no, there are bows, today's bows are so fast and so strong that you really don't need to over, over pound it yourself. You want to be comfortable. You're better off being still comfortable and quiet than you are uh, struggling to draw the bow back. The other thing we talk about in mixed bows, you, you always hear the word brace height, which is the distance from the string to the deepest part of the grip. The shorter that brace height is, the more energy can be transferred to the arrow. So it makes the arrow a lot faster, makes the bow a lot faster, but it also makes the bow a lot harder to shoot for a novice. So if you're a real beginner shooter, you want to have a large distance here of at least seven inches uh, or more. And that makes the bow a little more easy to shoot uh, in form. The shorter that brace height is, the longer the arrow stays on the string the more you can transfer the flaws in your form to the arrow flight. So you want that to be a very pretty big distance. So when you're shopping around looking at bows, you know, stay, especially for a beginner archer, you want to stay at least seven and above for that brace height. Um, a lot of bows get down around five or six, which if you're not a very experienced archer, it's going to be very difficult for you to shoot. The last thing in my opinion that you want to consider is, this, is how fast it shoots an arrow. Um, it's important in the, in the aspect that it helps you uh, in your distance uh, judgment that you can uh, be a little more off and still stay in the spot that you want to hit but speed is is secondary to accuracy so you want to be able to shoot the bow a little faster a little more accurate that way than you can um, so <clears throat> don't worry about so much about that just pick something that's that's comfortable for you to shoot and, and the speed will happen on its own um, you know we get a, we get into the mode of chasing the speed dragon in uh, archery and so we want the bow to go faster and faster and faster, which also makes the bow more, the faster that arrow goes, the more difficult it is to uh, shoot and, uh, and the more it shows up any flaws or anything that you have in your form. So you're better off shooting a little slower bow that you can shoot accurately and more comfortably rather than a super, super fast bow. So those are the top five things you probably want to look at when you're purchasing your next compound hunting rig for Nevada. Um, hope that helped.